Right at the heart of the Malayan archipelago, from the Philippine Islands to Australia, lies Singapore, focal point of Southeast Asia, easily approached by the world's air and sea routes from the Americas, from China, from New Zealand and Australia, from India, and from the West, Singapore is the natural center for all excursions in Asia. Here, where the sea and airlines cross, a great city port has grown, Asian in flavor, yet with every amenity of the modern world. The latest aircraft touch down every day at one of the most efficient international airports, bringing thousands of visitors, businessmen, and more tourists every year. More luxury cruisers are now routed through Singapore and tourists are staying longer than they used to, finding more here than just an overnight stop. Now the busiest in Asia and fifth largest in the world, Singapore's port is always a scene of fascinating activity. For here, the world's produce collects as in a vast warehouse. Raw materials and manufactured goods meet and pass and go their different ways. <laughs> Service for goods and people is quick and efficient and soon the visitors are on their way to explore this small island which is a little mirror of all Asia. The Singapore River is the city's main attraction. Here, where the ancient and modern trade routes meet, the original trading post has never lost its character. This is the timeless Singapore, where the vessels, the produce they carry, the noise, the smells and even the people are much as they ever were. No myrrh and frankincense perhaps, no peacocks and little ivory, but the everyday produce of the archipelago gathered by the traders and sailors who built Singapore's prosperity and shaped its character. This is the city's back door and here lies much of its prosperity and most of its charm. From other angles, as modern a city as any, clean, colourful and gay. Famous hotels and handsome business houses, shops and public buildings, symbols of a prospering democratic society, based on a harmonious mixture of all the races of the East.
But yet, on this crowded island, whose main business is commerce, there are scenes like these. Open spaces so the city can breathe, and where much of its food can be grown. The physical attractions are full of contrasts, but for many visitors, the city-state has a still greater appeal, its people. All the races of Asia have gathered here to live, attracted by its beauty and prosperity. The three main races today are Malay, Chinese and Indian. Malays, the original inhabitants, are Muslims. They have a distinctive style of dress and colorful customs, such as this wedding ceremony, where the bride must not smile, despite all efforts of her friends to make her. The Chinese, more numerous, have preserved their own customs and style of dress and found here, as did all comers, freedom and tolerance for their religion and language. The Indians, too. All bringing with them their way of living, their national dress, their customs, but now mingling. Living, working and playing together in all the richness of their diversity. A nation in the making. The government's housing policy to build more and more low-cost flats and houses is also hastening the process of breaking down barriers. Not only are the slums disappearing, but bright, airy homes like these, with playgrounds around them and shops and markets close at hand, are uniting Singapore's different peoples in their efforts for still higher standards of living. always, everywhere in this small island, there are many places to play in, even in the heart of the city. Parks, community centers, and playgrounds. There are clubs for games, public and private swimming pools, and lovely beaches. Where the sun shines all the year round, Singapore is a paradise for the outdoor life.
visitors are always delighted with the famous botanic gardens, where a great variety of tropical plants can be studied and admired. Great interest too is the vast family of monkeys. And of even more interest, Singapore's glorious collection of orchids, many of them bred here by crossing local and imported varieties. Singapore is becoming internationally famous as an orchid growing centre and boxes of these lovely flowers are now being sent all over the world on a commercial scale. In the crowded streets of Chinatown, you will find all the cheerful noise and pavement life of a typical Chinese community. Crafts and trades, both ancient and modern, pursue their quiet ways. From the cobbler to the fortune teller, whose clever little bird will select a fortune for you to guide your actions for the coming day. The lantern maker has round the year work, for there are always occasions for ceremonial lanterns. Good luck for the opening of a new shop, or long life wishes for a bridal pair, or a devotee's offering to a temple. In this city of so many races, someone is always celebrating a festival. Each year brings many occasions for decoration and ceremony. Among the most colourful is the Chinese Harvest Festival, the time for lanterns and mooncakes. The lanterns take many bright shapes and forms, and choice is difficult. But above all, perhaps, Singapore is becoming increasingly famous as a shopper's paradise. In this duty-free port, goods are as cheap as you can get them anywhere. And sometimes, for reasons known only to trade, even cheaper than in their country of origin. There are manufactured goods from the West and a wide range of products from all parts of Asia. Curios and silks from China, Hong Kong and all regions of Southeast Asia. Here in one convenient spot you can find them all. a wide area of beauty and interest. When the time comes to go, there are many places to visit within easy distance. From this busy airport, a score of flights a day can carry you quickly and easily to all the glamour and splendour of Southeast Asia, to Indonesia, Borneo, Japan and Hong Kong, to Malaya, Burma and Thailand.
yet complete and unique in itself. So stop over in Singapore. <laughs>